Hello video editors, thanks for watching Storyship. Today we're going to create the following logo animation in Adobe Premiere. In this tutorial I'll show you step by step how to build this logo animation. But first a quick shout out to Envado Elements for sponsoring this video. If you want to improve your video editing projects and make them look more professional, then definitely check out Envado Elements. They offer thousands of high quality video editing templates for apps like Premiere Pro and After Effects. Besides video editing templates, they also offer stock videos, music and sound effects, fonts and much more. And this is all included in one single subscription. And that's why I think that Envado Elements is a must have for every content creator. If you want to give them a try, then please use my temporary discount code that you can find in the video description. This way you can try them a month for a couple of dollars. Inside Premiere I'm going to start by adding my logo to the timeline. This is a transparent PNG image. I will add this one to the first track on the timeline and then extend the duration to about 10 seconds. This image is obviously way too large for this sequence, so I'm going to scale it down inside the effect controls panel. And after that I'll reposition the image somewhere over here. Next I'm going to add some text and to do this I need to enable the type tool here. Then click somewhere in the program monitor and then I'll type the word story. And by the way I'm using this Ubuntu bold font which is available in Google Fonts. Anyway I'll hit the escape key on the keyboard to exit type mode and then hit the V key to go back to the selection tool. Now I can resize the text and then reposition the text to the center like this. You can see the red lines that will help me to snap the text to the center of the frame. You can enable these red lines by going to this wrench icon here at the bottom and then select Snap in Program Monitor. Next I'll copy this text layer by hitting Ctrl or Command C and then paste this with Ctrl or Command V. As you can see here we've now got two copies of the same text. I'm going to select one of them and then move them to the right. This way the text is perfectly aligned with the other part and I can double click on it to edit the text. Then I'll take both parts and then center the entire word Storytium. This time we cannot use the snap and monitor option, so we need to manually align the word. Ok, that should do it, looks good enough for now. In the next steps I'm going to separate both parts of the word Storytium on different tracks. The first step here is duplicating this essential graphics item on the timeline. We can do this by holding the ALT key combined with the left mouse button and then drag it one track up to make a copy. Now I'm going to remove the last part of the word Storytium from the bottom text layer. And I'll remove the first part of the word from the top text layer. So as you can see here, we've now separated the word in two parts on two different text layers. Next I'm going to add some more text on a separate layer. So we need to deselect all the layers and then enable the type tool to add some text. And here I'll type the URL storytium.com. Then exit type mode and go back to the selection tool and resize the text. And to add some variations I'm going to switch to the Ubuntu regular font. And finally, center align and reposition the text. And that's it for the text design. We can now extend the layers on the timeline and match this with the duration of the image layer. In the next steps we're going to animate the text and the logo. The first step is adding the sound effect that I found on Avado Elements. I'm going to add about one second of space before the sound effect starts, so this way we've got enough room for the animations. Now it's time to add an effect and we're going to add this to all the layers, so I'm going to select them all and then move over to the effects panel. In there I'm going to search for the transform effect. I will add this effect to all the layers, then deselect the layers and then select the bottom one, the logo image. If you zoom in on the waveform from the sound effect, you can see these peaks here. We're going to use these peaks as the points for the animations. So I've cut the playhead right at the point of the first peak and that's where I'm going to enable keyframes for position for the image layer. Let's zoom in in the effect controls panel so you can see that when I hit the right arrow key then Premiere will skip one frame forward. And now I will slightly offset the position of the image, something like this. And then again skip one frame forward and then reset the position. And finally let's move back a couple of frames and then add another keyframe by moving the image completely out of the frame. And with these couple of keyframes we've now created this animation including a small bounce at the end. We can also add a bit of motion blur by disabling the option to use composition shutter angle and then set shutter angle to 180. And now if I give this a playback you can see some smooth motion blur going on. And to make this all even more smoother we're going to right click on the first keyframe and then select the option to ease out. 
and then open up the position properties and then use this blue handle to create a ramp in the graph. And this all together will make the animation look like this. And for the next animation, I'm going to move over to the next peak inside the waveform. And then also enable keyframes for position inside the effect controls panel. I'm going to repeat all the same steps that I did for the image, except here we're going to move in from the left. So I'm going to add all the keyframes and then give the first keyframe the option to ease out. And then inside the position properties, we'll change the graph like this. And finally, add motion blur by disabling the option to use composition shutter angle and set shutter angle to 180. In the next steps, we're going to repeat the same actions for the other two text layers. Only the directions are different, I'm going to move the last part of the word Storysham in from the right, and I'll move Storysham.com in from the bottom. Now I'm going to speed up the screen recording because you've already seen how to do this. And this way we can keep the tutorial short and concise. Okay, so now I've made the same changes to all the layers, and this is the animation that we've created with that. Ok, now it's time for the final part, adding the glowing background. And to do this we first need to add a color mat. In the project panel we need to click on the new items icon and then select color mat. And then accept the default sequence settings and click ok. Now we need to select a color and in this case I'm going to pick the color from my logo. But of course you can pick any color you prefer. And finally we can give this a name, I'll name this one background. I'm going to move all the layers one track up to make some space for the background layer. And then add the background to the first track on the timeline. And then extend the layer on the timeline to match the other layers. And then move over to the effects panel to add the circle effect. As you can see this one is in the obsolete folder so I hope that Adobe will keep this effect alive for a while. Or maybe add a replacement in future versions. And by adding this effect we've now got this circle added here in the center. I'm going to change some settings in the effect controls panel. First I'm going to increase the feather to 1500. And after that change the blend mode to add and then if I play around with the radius you can see the glow effect that we want. So I'm going to move to the beginning of the timeline and then enable keyframes for radius. Then increase the radius until everything is white. Then move forward to the first peak of the sound effect and lower the radius until it looks something like this. At the second last peak I'm going to add another keyframe with the same value. Then move a couple of frames forward and increase the value again. And then finally the last keyframe will be minus 500. Of course you can always play around with the timing or values of these keyframes, but this is what we've created with these couple of keyframes. And finally one more improvement that I want to mention, and that's adding the Bezier option to the keyframes. This will make the glow animation a bit smoother. And that's it for this logo animation tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please like the video, I would really appreciate that. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.